linebacker to wear a Cowboys uniform. I take credit for putting Randy White into the Hall of Fame uh, because as a linebacker, uh, he just didn't compare. Thomas, uh, when he was here, he was too lazy to work. Uh, you know, he, uh, he always had something he got out of practice for. He was cut by the Cowboys less than a year later. At the time, he was bitter and angry towards head coach Tom Landry. But like all players from his era, those feelings have grown into a deep respect for the man in the hat. I rejected every notion of him, his morality, his Christian faith. But today I try to emulate as much of him as I can. Uh, I want to be like Tom Landry. I learned a lot about football from Tom Landry. And uh, I learned a lot about some other things in life from Tom Landry. And I didn't really know I was learning them at the time. It's like when you were a kid and your mom disciplined you, telling you things over and over again. If you heard it once, you heard it a hundred times. You can't tell him too much. I can't thank him enough for the 14 years experience I had with While Landry would coach another 10 years, the man who brought him his victories on the field would announce his retirement on March 31st, 1980. The first golden age of Cowboys football would end with his decision. It's been a lot of good ones. And there'll be many more good ones. But I, uh, I thank the Cowboys, and I'm retired. Two years after his retirement, Staubach would have second thoughts about his decision to leave the game. The competitive juices were still flowing when he watched Dwight Clark make the catch in San Francisco. Roger Staubach was standing at the 10-yard line that day in street clothes. Tony Martinez, Channel 8 Sports. If the Cowboys had managed to just win one of those Super Bowl games with the Steelers, history might have treated this team a little bit better. Only five players are in the NFL Hall of Fame, and that doesn't seem right. When you consider that in the decade of the 70s, the Cowboys won five conference titles, two Super Bowls, and never had a losing record. When Roger Staubach retired in 1980, it was the end of an era in Dallas. Hard times were coming for the city and the football team. Stay with us. In order to enjoy the 90s, you have to suffer through the 80s. That's next. To bend in those shoes, you know, uh, was a great opportunity for me, a great experience. I just hope uh, that I'm remembered as, as one of the Tom Landry Dallas Cowboys. That marked a, a passing of the torch, if you will, where we uh, um, were representing, and you know, the road to the Super Bowl was through Dallas uh, in the NFC, and then we passed it over to, to San Francisco. A lot of us had a good time in Dallas in the 80s, but the Cowboys certainly didn't, not on a football field anyway. Clint Murkison was forced to sell his football team, and after 20 straight winning years in the 80s, the winning stopped. Cowboys fans had become complacent by then. But by the end of the decade, there wasn't a complacent Cowboys fan in the state of Texas. Here's Susie Woods. Eighty, eighty-one, eighty-two. 82. It was a fairy tale existence for a quarterback. I mean, I actually started believing I was that good. The last vestiges of the Roger Staubach era flickered out with one more remarkable comeback in Danny White's first season. Although he would lead the Cowboys to three straight NFC title games, his legacy would be determined in the 1981 championship against San Francisco. Danny never really had that magic that, that Roger had. The game against San Francisco put a damper on Danny's career. I don't have nightmares about it because I will go to my grave believing that Joe Montana was trying to throw that ball into the bleachers, and he underthrew it, and Dwight Clark intercepted it. He was about passing it. I think what happened was he was trying to throw it up in the nickel seat, and uh, he was off balance, and that's why the ball hung on That kind of was a uh, pendulum right there. You know, San Francisco kind of went up after that game, and, and Dallas, we kind of went down after that game. Eddie DeBarlo Sr. said uh, this team we beat yesterday, this Dallas team, they call themselves America's team, but we beat them yesterday. Well, why shouldn't we be America's team if we beat America's team? The next few years, when things started to kind of fall apart, we had a lot of injuries, and I was responsible for the one time when the photographers actually caught Tom Landry 
completely out of control. Nobody's going to move. And they didn't make it. I don't think he thinks they're going to snap the ball. He's going, no, no. I audible to a slant 36. That was when Landry was on the sideline screaming, no, no, no. Big opening for Tony Dorsett. Look out, he's going to receive. 99 yards and a half. In 1983, Tony Dorsett raced 99 yards for a touchdown. Amazing pounds. Can you believe that? And in 1985, the Cowboys won the NFC East title for the final time in the Landry era. We felt like that that was going to be uh, a year that we were going to win a Super Bowl. Little did we know that we'd be knocked right out of the playoffs for uh, first game. When the USFL folded in 1986, Herschel Walker joined the Cowboys. But the dream backfield of Walker and Tony Dorsett never materialized. It's taken Dorsett 13 years to admit the biggest mistake of his Hall of Fame career. I had to do it all over again. Um, I don't think I got it done. I was just being a little vindictive, I guess, in, in some regards. I just felt hurt. But, yeah, I should have retired. But, but, I mean, I'm a cowboy to the day I die. Dorsett departed amid claims he had lost a step. The same accusation facing Tom Landry. Uh, I've decided to go with posterity in this game. A posterity. For people who said that he's lost touch with the game, it's not true whatsoever. It's the players, and you always got to have the players. We were breaking down the film, and we had run a particular pass coverage 38 times. And I was putting all 38 together, and I was analyzing it. And then I was going to go in and make a report to Coach Landry. I could only find 37 of them. So I went in and I said, uh, Coach, I know we ran this play 38 times, but I, I've only been able to find 37 of them. He said, well, what, what are you in here for? I said, well, I, I thought we won't talk about maybe the 37. He said, we ran 38 times, didn't we? I said, well, yes, he said, we'll go find 38 and come in, we'll talk about it. I remember the first words he said to me, he was a thousand old, I got in a fight. I, I was hitting the guy with my head. We we'll pay you a lot of money for those hands. Next time, don't use your hands. And he just walked. <laughs> in December 1988, Tom Landry would win his 270th and final game of his career. It would come against his old rivals, the Washington Redskins. He was just a great... Uh, coaching effort, not only from Landry, but from all of our systems. So that game was very, very special for us, and we felt that uh, uh, he deserved a game. While Troy Aikman wouldn't be a Cowboy until April, Tom Landry was already preparing for his arrival. At the same time, Bob Bright had decided the Cowboys needed even more new blood. Status of the sale of the Cowboys will be clarified within the next 48 hours. Until that time, I have no comment. The way that uh, we announced the purchase and at the same time announced that there had been a change made regarding Coach Landry, there was a mistake. This is a new generation. Uh, it's like a wake. You know, it's like a, uh, losing your best friend. It's tough when you break a relationship that we've had for 29 years. Tom Landry back at Valley Ranch to clean out his office, and after 29 years, this is Jimmy Johnson's office now. You get down, boy. He came over to me. Uh, he said, uh, "Well, it was you know, it was a great run. I'm going to miss coaching with you. With you. Yeah, you look like you're in pretty good shape. You're dressed for the occasion. You know, it was devastating to us, especially to me, because I've been around long enough to retire on the team. I don't think in your lifetime or the lifetime." your kids to come, that you will ever see an NFL coach who's fired after going 3 and 13, and then is given a parade downtown where 50,000 people show up to cheer. Now that was the measure of how this community felt about Landry and all that he had brought to him over the years. Oh, I couldn't say enough for him, you know, that could happen. And I couldn't say enough for our owner, Clint Murkison. Clint Murkison was really the reason, 